Alright, so let's go ahead and let's start creating some of the lighting. I'll be using spotlights for most of this because um, they're the most versatile ways of lighting a set. And in order to create those gradients, I'm probably gonna try to position the key light somewhere where it gives me some decent shade uh, shaping for the volcano. Okay, and I'm also gonna adjust the setting so that we get some penumbra. Okay. Um, in the paint over, I had gradients going upwards. So let's see if that is something we can achieve. We might have to kind of um, separate the lights. Uh, let's see. Let me go and see what this looks like from the point of view of the camera. Because uh, lighting for the camera is the most important thing, especially when you're working in a shot, not a sequence. Okay, let me switch this to shaded view. Let me hide all the curves and just show the polygons. I mean, nerve surfaces. Okay, so the camera is right there. So let's try to keep this to the side. Um, let's see what this looks like now. Right, so this was before and after. So we're getting some nice shaping, but um, like now we can clearly separate these two planes, but we're not getting any shadows, so let's turn on that maps. Let's see the difference. Uh, we're getting some shadows now, okay, which is nice. It kind of helps to ground it a little bit better. Um, but I'm not really happy with the shaping. I feel it still feels like a little flat. Um, so let's try to make the light a little bit stronger. Okay. Okay. So this is probably a little too strong. And we're also getting some light over there. Um, by default, the lights have uh, no decay. So you kind of want to change that. So that the lights do have some decay. You're going to have to increase their intensity a lot in order to compensate. So let's make this 6,000. Let's try 3,000. Right, so let's see what that gives us. Okay. Mm, it's probably a little too strong. I usually try to block the lighting in with the least amount of lights, and I focus with the focus of the shot, which in this case is the volcano. Um, now we're getting some decent shading, and I always like to go back and forth between what it used to be and what it is, so I can tell if I'm making progress or not. Okay, so let me turn it off so I can compare before and after. Okay, so that was before, and that's after. So that's blowing out, but it may be because the material are too different. And we're getting some decent shade in there and some decent shade in there. Now the material for this is probably too reflective. So that's probably washing out the objects. So I'm gonna go under the material and I'm gonna make it um, less reflective, probably 0.1. And I might even wanna try and separate it so that it doesn't completely blend in. So I might actually uh, make it a little brighter. Um, let me just lift those slightly. 
let's see what this looks like okay um actually let me undo that i think i like it better with the darker thingy let's see what it looks like to just dim down reflections okay so you've definitely read pretty well uh, I think the problem we had before is that it was blending in a lot. Um, so I think it helps. And I think it helps to have a continuous light source so that all the planes facing right are brighter and all the, the planes facing left are darker. As far as the mountain goes here, the volcano, I think it would be nice to have a gradient. So let me see if I can change the cone angle to something like Twenty, and see if that helps giving getting us a gradient. It is, but it's also affecting that um, again. The focus of the shot is the volcano, so I definitely want that to read first. Okay. I think I can probably go as far as 10 so that we can get a nice clear gradient on the volcano. And let me change this to actually 5 then. What you can do if you really want to make sure that you're lighting what you want, you can actually look through the light. This way you can actually get a sense of uh, what's being lit. Um, if you look through the light, a camera will be created. It's kind of a temporary camera. You can adjust it so that you can uh, make sure that whatever you want to light is the focus, right? It seems like we won't be getting any light on the wall, which is actually probably a good thing. So we can light it separately. And also we should get a clear gradient now going across the volcano. So let's render this again and let's see what happens. Okay, so now we're getting some clear definition of that. Um, now, all this time we've had this ambient light, lighting, helping us light the scene. So I think it's come time to tone it down a little bit so that we can get uh, most light in the shot from our light sources instead. So I'm going to change the intensity to 0.25. So the scene will get darker, but it will allow us to be to make better decisions about the lighting. Okay, so already we can see that the balance has changed up dramatically. So let's make the key light brighter so that we can get more light on the volcano. And uh, I think we can make the ambient a little brighter. And I definitely don't like this kind of pool of light here. So if there's a way I can remove it, that would be nice. So I'm actually gonna tilt this so that we don't get any light over there. And let's try this again. Mm. Okay. I think we're getting some nice shading on this. Um, now we can actually focus on lighting the scene overall. So, while well, this one is specifically for the volcano, this light, I'm probably going to duplicate it and have a key. Uh, it takes a little bit when you have ViewPro 2.0 enabled. I'm going to call this. Um, key set, so this is going to be key for everything, let's say. And this one, I'm going to have a little bit of a bigger cone angle, like that. And uh, again, I don't want any light on the on the wall. And I kind of want to make make it look like the light is coming from above, but still retain some shading. So let's see what I can do. 
lighting in Maya software is definitely a different experience than lighting. Um, in Manta Ray, because you're having to fake a lot more stuff. Um, so this is definitely not a lighting tutorial um, that I would recommend to anyone using Manta Ray. There's a lot of cheating that I'm doing and a lot of incorrect stuff that I usually wouldn't do. Okay. So this light is almost frontal to the camera which is not 100% what I recommend, but it will help us to get some uh, separation of the planes, hopefully. Um, I think it might be good to tint the light slightly. So let's keep these lights a little warm. Or oh, we could make them a little greener to suggest that they are fluorescent lights. Um, but I could keep the volcano key a little warmer, so maybe we can get the volcano to stand out a little bit more. Okay, uh, so let's see what happens if we render this. Right, so now we're getting some nice contact shadows. Uh, the volcano is standing out, but the ground is definitely too dark, and this item doesn't stand out at all. So that's an issue. Um, but I do like what's happening with the with the wall here, definitely. So let's see if we can move this so there's less difference in brightness between these two walls. And also because we're using depth map shadows, I wanna we select these items and we turn off cast shadows. So this way we won't get this kind of artifacts. We can do the same for the ground. Okay, it's already turned off. Uh, hopefully, if we look at the quality of the shadows before and after, the quality of the shadows should go up because the, those items are not casting shadows anymore. You see? Um, we're still getting some artifacts, but it might be enough to increase the resolution of the shadows. Um, this pool of light, I don't like. So, why don't we take this light, which is for the volcano, and we um, break the light links with the ground. So lighting, break light links. So now the light that is lighting the volcano in the ball should not affect the ground at all. So we can create another light, see, to focus on this area. And these kind of artifacts are coming from the shadow, these kind of stripy patterns. So we might have to increase the resolution to 124 and uh, even raise the bias a little bit I think that will help the bias will allow the shadow apps to remove some of the details Okay, I think we're still getting some artifacts over there let me make this pie the volcano key let's see if we can catch more deta details if the shadows are higher resolution Okay, it didn't make a difference for the volcano at all, so we can actually bring this back. And that's still there, so we can actually increase the bias to 0.1. Let's see if it fixes that line. Ah, the line is still there. Oh, it, it's actually part of the texture. Never mind that. I thought this line was related to uh, those other lines, but it's not. Okay, cool. So now let's try to get some light around this area. Um, we might have to rebalance this key, the volcano key, so it's not as strong, because I'm expecting that this light um, and uh, I'm gonna call this uh, top top light. So there's gonna be key set, and let's call this key set top. Um, so I'm actually going to take this light and I'm going to move it on top of the set and I'm going to increase the cone angle so that we get a nice pool of light 
and I probably will want this to be coming from roughly the same position as the key but definitely from above so that we can get some nice lighting on that bulb alright and I can make this a little bigger So let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, so now this is appearing a little blown out, but we're getting some nice gradient here, and that is starting to stand out. Now, um, I probably will want to make this light brighter, but because it's interfering with the volcano, I'm actually going to select these items and break the light links. So that we have now a complete separate key for the volcano and the ground and the item. Okay, so I actually can bring back the light intensity onto the volcano since now um, the other light won't interfere. So you can see that my goals right now are to create interesting gradients, make the important objects stand out, add shaping, add contrast, um, separate the planes. Um, I think this might be too bright and that might be too dark. I think it's creating contrast necessarily. So I might actually tone this down a little bit and increase the cone angle. And it would be nice to get a little bit more light on the bow, so I'm actually going to move this closer here so we can get a little bit more light. And I think this item, this bow, is actually probably too bright because it really stands out from the rest. So I'm probably going to actually go and take down some of the diffuse, just a little bit, so it doesn't blow out as much. Okay, so let's go back to what we had before, and let's see where we have gotten so far. So. Now we definitely can separate the two planes, which is nice. Um, let's see what the original image. We're definitely getting some interesting gradients, which is nice. We aren't getting uh, any spec on these, and there's not enough material variety, I think. So I think we can focus on that. Uh, but I would also get started on breaking up some of those very um, complicated, I mean very straight edges and add some kind of interest to the, to the image. I think lighting wise we're getting somewhere already. I think I ideally would like better gradients over here so I think what I'll do is take this light which is what's contributing it to those gradients and I probably would remove make it a little bit tighter Okay, and let's see what that gives us. I feel like that plane is still too dark. Um, It's always a game between all these settings when you're trying to determine a better way to do this. Alright, so let's see if this gives us a nice vertical gradient. Okay, yeah, so this is giving us a nice gradient. It might be a little too much 
it might be starting to interfere but I think the poster itself uh, the textures for the poster are actually a little too bright so let me go to the poster and change the diffuse to something like 0.5 and let me go to the wall and change this to 0.6 so then we are creating uh, we are bringing more attention to the volcano actually oh I think these two planes actually have different materials so let's match this point six okay so hopefully now the volcano and the item will stand out more okay so you see we are clarifying the image and creating gradients so now the point of interest is clearly the sphere here and the volcano there I think we can even go further with the beauty lighting on the volcano, but we will first need to um, add interest to the materials. Uh, but we can do the um, in a moment. Let me stop. Point three five. So you see how we are applying the same principles I spoke about in the Photoshop file, the Photoshop demo, and we are applying them in three D. It all comes down to a flat image at the end of the day. So, if you cannot uh, prepare what you will do on a single flat image, it's going to be a lot more difficult once you start getting into the software. Right. So, what we haven't gotten to yet is any kind of bounce lighting. Lighting. Uh, also, let me go to this object and turn the reflectivity down because I think I'm getting some reflections that I. I'm not interested in. Actually, no. So I guess this line is not a reflection. But I'm getting reflections at the bottom. And I think they're probably too strong. So let me go down here and change the specular reflectivity to something like 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Alright, so I think what I'll do next is probably edit some of the materials in the volcano and the sphere um, and even the button and then do some modeling tricks now that we got the lighting in a pretty decent spot uh, 